Welcome back to another episode of the Catholic Buzz Podcast. Thanks for joining us as we continue our conversation, especially during the season of Lent. So maybe it's your Lenten penance to join us on the podcast. My name is Father Daniele, and I'm joined by Josh Sullivan. Yo. And by Matt Van Milligan. Hello. Yes, you are not my penance for Lent. No. <laughs> as much as you might think. Yeah. Uh, we are still going through the season of Lent, and I haven't changed my mind. I still enjoy Lent. I think last week you said because of the fruits, the fruits yeah. that come uh, from Lent. And so I think I'm a, a big fan. Are you yeah. a big fan? I like to eat fruit at Lent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well... You know, Lent obviously is celebrated in the entire Catholic Church throughout the world. That's why I really think Lent is such a grace time. Every Catholic around the world is uh, or should be doing prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. There's lots of grace there. Mm-hmm. Like, we're not just doing it, the three of us, or your parish, or whatever. It's Catholics around the entire world are doing this together. So it's a really graced period of time. With that, because the church is so universal, mm-hmm. there are a lot of different practices during Lent mm-hmm. yeah. that some people uh, take on, some people do, uh, certain geographic areas uh, kind of participate in. Kind of like, you know, before Lent starts, there's Shrove Tuesday, Mardi Gras, yeah. you know, so some areas of the world really make a big flare up of it. Yeah. Uh, your Like your parish might just have pancakes or whatever. I mean, like, yeah. mm-hmm. There's different practices wherever... Uh, we go, but during Lent, there's different sort of things. So I, I thought we'd talk about some of the practices of Lent that we see during the 40 days of Lent uh, and yeah. and try and, you know, uh, flesh them out a little bit. Yeah, understand them more and yeah. so we can understand what's going on. Sure. Yeah. What would you say is one of your uh, favorite or uh, preferred practices of Lent that you either practice or that you see other people doing? Um, one of the ones that always comes to mind is, uh, fasting on Fridays. Mm -hmm. Uh, so specifically no meat meat on Fridays. Yeah. And so I think that comes up because in the Catholic church in North America specifically, um, they've taken away that, uh, they haven't taken away. They have given other options to that throughout the rest of the year. So you Mm -hmm. can do, uh, um, you know, acts of charity or something else throughout the rest of the year. But when it comes to Lent itself, in Lent, you have to uh, you s- sustain. Uh, you have to abstain from meat, uh, and so all the rest of the year you're supposed to abstain from meat, but but you could potentially substitute in something different. Yeah. And I think I, I I don't know if uh, everybody knows that. Yeah. So um, like what um, the Catechism identifies as you know the pe- penitential days yeah. are are the days of Lent and every Friday throughout the year. Yeah. Um, I, I think a lot of people are aware of. Uh, in Lent, but n- yeah. not not everybody's aware of throughout uh, the rest of the year. Fridays, yeah, yeah. I think it, you're right. People look at it as a Lent thing, yeah. like it's Lent. But it, no one has said you don't have to for the rest of the year. Remember, the reason we d- refrain from meat on Friday is an act of charity, an act of penance, an act of self restraint, self control, because yeah. Jesus sacrificed his flesh on Good Friday. Mm-hmm. And so we avoid fleshy foods, right? It's like, yeah. it's it's to commemorate the somberness of the Friday. Yeah, I think, I think yeah, Friday, because Jesus died on a Friday. But but also, uh, flesh is a big part. Like, that's one of the things that everybody, like, if you said, okay, you got to give up beer. Well, that's not going to be a sac- Like, if the church said you have to give mm-hmm. up beer, that's not a big sacrifice to certain individuals, right? It might be a huge sacrifice to others, but for other individuals, not. But one of the things that we can all agree on is... And, and you couldn't get through the day without carbs, I think, especially like medieval times and stuff like that where all you had left to do. But meat was a privilege. Meat was a, was a privilege to eat. It was kind of the thing that you, like everyone had a piece of bread. You could always get like a piece of bread, but meat was always a little more expensive. You had to go hunting for meat. You had to like work for meat. Um, and so by not, by abstaining from meat, it's from abstaining from like a, a feast or a festival, mm-hmm. that type of thing. And so you're, you're abstaining from a, feasting type of a thing on on Fridays and specifically focusing more on uh, penance if you will or mm-hmm. just or just um self control. Yeah, and and you're right. It does get you like you know we've we've had a couple of Fridays of Lent now uh and uh, every Friday I'm like, "Oh, what I didn't plan this out very well. Like <laughs> uh, what am I going to eat today?" Yeah. You know? A lot of grilled cheeses in my house. <laughs> a lot of macaroni and tomatoes. Right. Um, apparently, though, there are a couple of, uh, kind of just to bring up because it's kind of cool, uh, there are some um, animals that you are allowed to eat on Friday. Like? Um, uh, so you're not allowed to eat fish. 
I mean, you're allowed to eat fish, but uh, some animals were classified as fish by the Catholic Church. And one of them was the capybara. Does that make capybara? sense? Capybara? Yeah. Like the rodent? Yeah. Wow. Th- they're actually classified as a fish in that. I know. Okay. So it's yeah. one of the weird, that's why I wanted to bring it up. It's a weird thing. One of the other ones, I think you were talking about Father Alligator, I guess? Yeah. The Bishop of New Orleans, of Louis- in Louisiana had classified that, that alligator, alligator is, meat is, okay. is okay during Lent. Yeah. And so there's a couple like, hey, there you go. If you can catch a capybara or, uh, you know, an <laughs> a alligator. And- yeah. Capybara, <clears throat> beaver, and other aquatic animals count as fish during <laughs> Lent. So, Isn't that weird? Yeah. Um, so if you, you want. They're an aquatic animal, I guess. That's, I, that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, uh, would a duck count then? Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, see, it has fins, it has web feet, but it's a fowl. It'd be chicken. I'm maybe not, I don't it's going to have a duck feast this Friday. Well, I think I think just no one really wants to eat these animals, so it's still a sacrifice to eat a beaver. It's just a yeah. sacrifice yeah, yeah. to eat a capybara or a rodent, right? Like yeah. you got, you can eat possum. You know, I don't know. Anyways, I do encourage it during the rest of the year. Like yeah, I'm, sure. mm-hmm. I'm like personally, I'll admit, I'm very strict about it during Lent. I'm yeah. very strict about it that during Lent. And uh, throughout the throughout the rest of the year, I'm not as strict. Like, if I'm like running around, be like, and, you know, take a bite of a chicken sandwich or something like that, yeah. and I was like, <gasps> okay, uh, I, got, I got to do some okay, charitable, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know. So I must say, even I uh, do that. Uh, but it's it's a it's a good practice to do throughout mm-hmm. the year, and I think it keeps reminding us. You know, Jesus died for us. Jesus died for us, just like Sunday. Sunday is the day of the Lord. It's the day of the resurrection. And uh, all our joy culminates there, right? Yeah. But Jesus did die for us. He gave up his life for mm-hmm. us. And yeah. it's, a, it's a weekly reminder to us, like, what am I doing to sort of mark that sacrifice? And, and I really, I have been looking at this. So if somebody knows on the, I was listening to the podcast and they want to write in, this would be great. I haven't found anywhere that the Catholic Conference of Bishops in Canada have said that it's okay. So the United States bishops have have declared that it's okay to uh, substitute uh, substitute meat for the rest of the year, not during Lent on on uh, during Lent, but for the rest of the Fridays of the year, you can substitute. I've seen that where the uh, United States Catholic Conference of Bishops have said it, but I haven't been able to find anywhere where Canada has agreed to that. Hmm. I think it's just kind of been a tradition that's been melted over, uh, going through the borders, if you will, up into Canada, because we follow a lot of what yeah. you know United States Catholic Conference of Bishops does. Um, but if anybody has the exact, uh, I couldn't find it. I looked for it a lot of places, knowing that we were going to talk about something like this, and uh, I couldn't find it anywhere. Yeah. So. Um, in, uh, in 2006, the Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops released a document called Keeping Friday. Okay. Have you ever read that? No, I didn't, Friday. I didn't even know it has existed. I, and I, you know, mo- <laughs> maybe I shouldn't say that. I'll get, people will take it out of context, but I don't know how many people are reading documents by the Canadian Conference of Catholic <laughs> Bishops. Uh, but, uh, it is, uh, they do say that it is for everyone. Uh, for everyone who believe in Christ, young, old, sick, healthy, lay, and religious, they're invited to make Friday a special day. It's a day when we seek to share more, more fully in Christ's sufferings. Oh, it's a day of penance. It's not a form of self-punishment or an unhealthy desire to inflict pain on ourselves. <laughs> Rather, we do penance in order to discipline ourselves and to live in union with Jesus who suffered. Right? Different kinds of penance, doing God's will, giving things up that we enjoy. Uh, we're called to do good works every day, but on Friday we may do them to thank Jesus, like works of charity, prayer, or to spend time reading God's word. Acts of penance, it says this. Ready? Yeah. We can do at least one of these good actions each Friday. To abstain from meat or some other form of food, drink, or entertainment. Okay. Take part in a service of worship with others or pray with our family or spend extra time in personal prayer. Wait, wait. So you can pray on Friday, and that counts as your le- your your Friday obligation. Pray extra. Pr- pray extra. Well, <laughs> wait a second. Wait a second. I say an extra Hail Mary. We're good to go. Is that what it's saying? Well, it seems a little bit like we're cheaping out here. How about you come over on Friday, <laughs> and we'll get a bucket of chicken. <laughs> We'll pray before we'll, we'll we pray, eat. We'll it. pray before we'll pray we before eat. Before it. Eat it. And well, let yeah. me finish. It says, "Or good works, do okay. good to others by visiting the sick or aged, helping those in need, or by contributing time or money to a work of charity." See, we used so to have. We used you to guys have... could visit me. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> That's always a work of charity for me. That's what I use. As we a work we of used to have um, 
uh, youth group on Friday nights and moved to Thursday. But on Friday nights, that was kind of like one of the things I always thought about. Like, I am giving up a whole Friday night to go and do ministry mm-hmm. work and everything else. And that's kind of one of my things I thought about as my Lenten penance. But that was where somebody challenged me about the meat. So I'm glad. What was that 2006, you said, eh? 2006, Dr. Perfect. Me. Called <laughs> Good. Keeping Friday. I have to do an extra little um, prayer time. <laughs> you can also get it in a leaflet form. Oh. Yes. <laughs> so For those of us that you know don't what? want to go I'll there. send it to you. Thanks. How's That'd that? be great. I think we've spent way too much time talking about meat on Friday <laughs> because there's so many cool things about Lent when we got carried away because we found this leaflet and uh i want to mention that uh, the stations of the cross Mm -hmm. are one of my favorite things uh, during lent and i I really think it's a beautiful uh, tradition and uh like so in our for those of us who don't know what is the stations of the cross okay so the stations of the cross if i could be maybe if i can explain it simply it's uh 14 stations or 14 uh places in the church, so if you've if you've walked into a church, usually you see along the side of the walls of the church images of Jesus on his way to be crucified, and uh, there's 14 of them, okay. and so the Stations of the Cross is a prayerful meditation, walking sort of through each of those stations, like right? through the Passion of Christ. I yeah. Think? So mm-hmm. instead of you know when you go to church and everyone's facing forward toward yeah. the altar, well now we're sort of following along each station in in the church we're kind of we're kind of turning our heads to each station and there's a meditation at each station gotcha right so for example the first station is jesus is condemned to death yeah and then we always say we adore you O christ and we praise you because, because by, by your holy, holy cross, cross you, you have redeemed, redeemed the world, the world. Yeah. and then we explain what the station is there's and there's different variations of the prayer like saint francis of assisi has one saint alphonsus liguori has one pope francis has released one so there's no uh, there's no set like where we have the mass the Mass is the mass is the mass. Yes. Uh, there's no set. Um, so this, this, this there's no set text or text ritual. Text or ritual for yeah, the there, stations of Because it's a meditation. Yeah, it can like, be kind of anything. Yeah, like you could yeah. prayerfully write a meditation for us to use during the stations of the cross. Oh, like gotcha. if, if it's, and you know, uh, if it's helpful for people, yeah. we can use it. I know there's one called Mary's Way of the Cross, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's very beautiful. Uh, it, and it's like sort a meditation of with through Mary. those 14 stations oh. as Mary saw wow. it. Wow. Um, you know, so there's different things. So basically, you're 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 walking through those series of stations that are that are either pictures, carvings, uh, and they're portraying these moments in the life of Jesus. So, for example, like I said, Jesus is condemned to death. All three falls of Jesus are yeah. in there. Uh, Jesus having his face wiped by Veronica, Veronica. Simon of Cyrene carrying the cross. Yeah. Uh, Jesus is stripped of his garments. Uh, Nailed to the cross. Nailed to the cross, crucified. And then the last one is always he's placed in the sepulcher or the tomb yeah. where he's buried, right? So you kind of walk through those stations and and uh, you meditate on them. And it's really powerful. I, I know like our, our young adults led us uh, in our parish with St. Alphonse's Liguori's yeah. um, Stations of the Cross. It's just so powerful. Like He, he, he takes each station and... And I just remember the one where Veronica wipes Jesus' face and St. Alphonsus says something like, Lord, before you, before this arrest and beating, your face was beautiful and now it's disfigured. And then he turns it around on herself, just like my soul, who on the day of my baptism was beautiful. And And now I've disfigured it with my sin. And so we're looking at the, the 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 parts of Jesus' life, and now we're reflecting on our own Christian Interesting. life. Interesting. Yeah, it's it's really prayerful, and I would say it takes anywhere between. Well, it depends who's leading it. Uh, you know, some parishes I've been in, people rush through. Uh, but when you take your time, it doesn't have to be lengthy. I I think in our parish, it, it lasts anywhere from thirty to thirty-five minutes. Okay. Uh, and it's it's really a beautiful time to really pray and it's especially welcome practice during lent on fridays okay so if a church was to do it for the rest of the year you're praying together with individuals you can eat meat on friday you could do the stations of the cross <laughs> and then, then go have over a Kentucky. barbecue after yeah exactly yeah, yeah, yeah okay exactly <laughs> all right I'm still thinking about food i well hey you, we, we started it that's the that's of the my cross. stomach's rumbling now, uh, Matt, we were talking about before we started mm-hmm. about like where did this practice of the Stations of the Cross come from? Yeah, 
And I believe we understood that, like, I, I didn't really know. You yeah. didn't really know, which was, like, blew my Yeah, mind. it came up in our, our, our CIA group. And I was kind of a, a little bit ashamed to admit that um, it's, it's, yeah, it was one of my kind of blind spots. Is that why all the people left the RCIA now? <laughs> <laughs> Matt doesn't have all the answers. I'm just kidding. Yeah, there's so many people in our RCA program. But, yeah, where did it come from? Like, where do we figure it out? Okay, so yeah. what, what we did what we did find out that it was a devotional exercise exercise of the people visiting uh, the actual places where these things happened to Jesus. Okay. And uh, like, so they walked. The, they it started as a pilgrimage. They, yeah. they, like they a pilgrimage. took the traditional yeah. route uh, from the supposed location of Pilate's house to Calvary. And tradition holds that even Mary set up stone markers uh, at these places like so people can perfectly retrace the steps oh, of Jesus yeah so that's where it came from and then it took various forms right um all, all through through the centuries it took various th- the, the, the franciscans i think sort of yeah. popularized the, the was practice. it was yeah. it always 14 no yeah. i was I, uh, you were saying that the, the franciscans were the ones around the renaissance who formalized it as 14, 14 stations yes. and then that actually was um kind of superimposed over some of the pilgrimage sites in in jerusalem gotcha that's yeah. right yeah okay, that's right cool. uh so like yeah so instead of actually visiting the sites then there were like images of the sites yeah. and all that stuff so that's where we got that practice but i'm telling you if, if you've never prayed the stations of the cross before it's it's uh it's really medi- like it's really powerful there's a lot of standing, yeah. <laughs> like you and, stand and kneeling and, and genuflecting. You genuflect at each yeah. station, and so p- if you're focused on that, you're like, Ugh, you know. But it's it's kind of ironic if I'm using that in the right <laughs> word because like you're literally walking through the last steps of Jesus, and you're like, mm. oh, we're standing. I have to again. stand here, <laughs> like you know. And meanwhile, it's like Jesus fell the third time, <laughs> and it's like. I have to genuflect. How much longer is this? Yeah, but no, seriously. If if you're really into it and you're really praying with it, uh, it's it's really powerful. It's yeah. really powerful. I love Saint Alphonsus's. I love uh, the Mary's Way of the Cross. Uh, there and then, of course, uh, I will caution here. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm just gonna have to caution. So, like like I said, you, anyone can write like a mm. like a meditative. I know my the rector of my seminary when I was yeah. there wrote his own Way of the Cross uh, that he gave us all a little yeah. book for. Uh, like you know, all of us could. We, write could write, yeah. we could write one that's that's meditative, but but there are groups that I wouldn't recommend. Yeah, uh, like the, yeah. that. So have be written, cautious. Written, yeah, be cautious. Like in, instead of follow, like they use the Stations of the Cross to promote some sort of environmental or agenda, uh, of some agenda yeah. or some social justice issue. Yeah. Uh, like that's not the place for it. I don't think we're meditating on the on the death of Jesus. Let's like let's stay there. Yeah. Like it's good for us to, to reflect that we don't need to do anything else. So, so maybe I'll look at make, look at something that's been approved by the church or you know published by a, a diocese. <laughs> well, not and, maybe not. And I mean some of those <laughs> some of those have been approved or, okay. or or you know what and, and when I say approved by the church, it, like someone gave a stamp to it. Yeah, maybe yeah. a pastor, maybe yeah. a bishop, okay. or something like that. And 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 not that there's anything there's nothing yeah. inherently wrong with them. There's no heresy or anything in them. But it's like. We we don't need to uh, add other causes yeah. to the yeah. meditation. It's like yeah. Jesus falls the third time, and then and then we reflect on like some sort of social justice issue that has you know like, nothing to do with the passion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think I think the criteria you're giving is is fair. That like if the whole point of this devotion is to bring your focus onto the events of the like mm-hmm. the, the the last events of the life of Christ. Exactly. If if something is deliberately drawing your focus away from that, it's probably yeah. Not, the early Christians weren't walking yeah. that path uh, to Calvary, like at the actual scene, yeah. and then being like, "This is where they stripped Jesus of his garments." It's kind of like. We're stripping the environment yeah. of all yeah, yeah. the good things by using carbon. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like that wasn't that yeah, was yeah. not the point. There was one that I so my mom wrote one. I I just remembering now. Um, and but she wrote it through because she suffered with cancer for a couple of years, and so she wrote it in her last couple of days of cancer. Beautiful. And but what it was, and now that you're kind of saying, I think this one is a good one. But I'm biased because it's my mom. Um, before she passed, she uh, she wrote it reflecting on her her struggles with cancer not her struggles per se but the struggle of cancer so the ones that they're like the weeping women and talking about leaving people Mm. behind 
Mm. And so it was, but it was kind of doing what you were saying. It was like taking, so someone who's maybe struggling with cancer or struggling with that battle of, of, of something like that, taking some of those, that was still taking what she was going through at the time and reflecting on the life of Christ. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So that's, yes. a, that's different than yeah. like social justice issues. Yes, or anything exactly. Else. And that, I was just remembering that. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. She did that. But that was kind of a cool, um, to read back on it now you know, 10, 15 years later, it's kind of like, wow. Do you remember um, in, in uh, 2002 when Pope St. John Paul II was in Toronto for World Youth Day? Yeah, we, there was they a did a Stations Way down of the Cross, cross yeah, right yeah. down University Avenue in Toronto. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was actually written by John Paul II. So there oh, is wow. a Stations of the Cross oh, that's cool. out there written by John Paul II that was prayed there. And, and, you know what? It wasn't Lent. It was no. July of yep. 2022. Uh, that would be solid. And it was live too, right? They did it live. They did it live. live like, plateaus and they, and and they stuff. walked to yeah. all these areas. Like the, the downtown was like paralyzed that night yeah, because exactly. it, it was just so Millions. many people in the streets praying the Stations of the Cross. Yeah. That, that version of the Stations is probably pretty safe. If people yeah. Are, if, <laughs> probably, <laughs> if people are looking it? for one. Yeah. Even I would recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's the Stations of the Cross. Very good practice uh, during uh, Lent. Uh, anything else that we get that sort of a, is a good practice that people kind of take on during Lent? I got one, but um, so we talk about fasting on Fridays, but the other big one is our our Sundays a day off from Lent. We just got controversial. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's funny because it is a conversation that comes up, and and good that yeah. it comes up in kind of uh, you'd say uh, Catholic communities that that take Lent seriously and, so and, like, and you got different yeah. different camps well let's just explain this for a second um, so we talk about 40 days of Lent and I'm gonna say on both on, on the two different camps if you will one side says you have 40 days of Lent if you take all the Sundays out of Lent then you're left because like if we go from Ash Wednesday to let's say uh, Good Friday or whatever there's more than 40 days mm-hmm. So if we take all the Friday, if all the Sundays come out, then technically you're close to 40, closer to 40 days. I'm not exactly harsh. I don't think the math actually works out, but you're close to 40 mm-hmm. days or you're pretty darn close to 40 days at that point. Um, and so the idea is being that you're not supposed to fast on a solemnity like Sunday. That's right. And so you're not supposed to fast on a solemnity on Sunday. So you're, but the question becomes, are you supposed to feast on a solemnity? And that I think is where it kind of comes in. Two different camps. One is it's Sunday. We're not fasting, so you can party. Yeah. Uh, well, might as well celebrate. You might as well yeah. use this as a joyous occasion. The other side is saying, well, you, you don't have to fast, but you don't have to feast. Um, and it's still during Lent. For instance, if you're using Lent as a, as a way to break 30 days and break a habit, let's say, um, why would you let yourself fall into that habit yeah. again every week? Right. And that's kind of like you're not really breaking a habit then. Yeah. Um, but also giving it up for the full 40 days. So I think those are two different kinds of sides of camp. Right. One is like, no, it's a 40 day fast from Ash Wednesday all the way to Good Friday. And the other one is, no, you have Sundays off. Yeah. And uh, having debate. <laughs> no, no. I, yes. and, um, so, uh, yeah, you, you have these kind of different camps and there are there are pretty compelling arguments on both, both sides. sides that I it's agree, like yes. you, if Sunday is, you know, a mini Easter, yeah, you're celebrating yes. the resurrection. It, you know, some people would say, you know, it's not appropriate to have a somber attitude or to some, because he is risen. Yeah. Um, but again, in, in the context of Lent, um, you know, our, our, even our understanding of the resurrection is, is part of that preparation, part of that anticipation that we actually kind of are deferring yes. un, un, until Easter. Also kind of the, the math of, yeah. you know, that, okay, so, you know, you take away Sundays in Lent and then it's, it's closer to 40 days, but then <laughs> Still if, you add, days. if you include all of the actual solemnities, the feast days, uh, on top of that, then, you know, you're, 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 you're getting yeah. well below 40 at that point. Yeah. yeah. I am... I'm a leaner. <laughs> <laughs> you lean I'm, one way. I'm a leaner of not breaking the yeah. fast on Sunday. However, I do say because Sunday is the day of the resurrection, it is the, the you know that holy day where we mark the, uh, the Lord's day. I don't think we have to actively fast. And what I mean by that is, I don't think we should go out of our way to break our fast. Hmm. Right. So let's say, for example, give up chocolate. You don't go buy a bunch of chocolate exactly. to eat on Sunday. It's not but cheat day. Yeah. It's not yeah. cheat yeah. day. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's a good way, Matt. Yeah. It's not cheat day. But um, you're if, out and about, and there's a chocolate there. Sure. Yeah. And, and, you know, <laughs> if you gave up ice cream and that's what's for dessert that night, you know, I, you're at visiting and, somebody. And I wouldn't have two ice creams. Maybe no. I would have a little bit of ice cream or something like that. I don't know. But I'm a leaner 
to like it's 40 days there are 365 of them in a, in a year <laughs> yeah. like for 40 days i think we can if you've chosen to do something because i think like you said yeah. there is merit to breaking making a new habit yeah it's at 30 days or yeah. 21 days or whatever it is 30 days you yeah. know so if you keep breaking it every six days you're like ah yeah. and then it i always say remember why you're doing it yeah remember why you're doing it are you doing it just to get through lent and then it's not just to get through lent it's to get to sunday yeah Mm-hmm. You know, or yeah. are you like, are you doing it because this is the sacrifice you're taking this year to grow in holiness? And if, if that's what you're doing, yeah. then do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I, I know that's, yeah. that might not be popular okay. with people, but uh, that's, I lean that way. I was tracking with you until you said a little bit of ice cream. Yeah. I, well, <laughs> I can't have just a little bit of ice cream. I so <laughs> I just need to avoid it entirely. Yeah. Um, um, I, I agree. I agree that that though, cause that is my, that's my thinking too. If I'm, if I'm trying to do create a habit, I'm trying to create something and, take on good and like we talked about i think on the last episode um, we can see fruits from it Hmm. if we can see those fruits why would we stop i I mean if so if like for my family we cut out tv all around and so nobody watches tv um like the kids aren't sorry the kids aren't allowed to watch tv video games that kind of stuff um that's what we've given up for the kids as as a as a family my wife and i do have tv time uh every now and then but uh, don't tell the kids. They listen to this podcast every Uh-oh. now and then. Oh, no, but they, but they. Um, so we know that. But then my son was like, "Well, no." I, so now it's Sunday. He's only nine, ten, and he's like, "Oh, so I get to watch TV?" And I was like, "Okay, well, you get to watch like whatever that we normally allow you to watch." So it's an hour a day, I think, is what we said. I was like, "So you get to watch an hour a day," and and he's like, "Well, no, it's it's." And I was like, "No, no, this is not feast or famine. This mm-hmm. is this is this this is this is you get the normal day allotment." Like on a regular Sunday. So if you want to watch an hour, it's Sunday. You can watch that hour. But like something for me, for him, I don't like it's an hour of TV. It's not a big deal. Um, but for me, the f- working out or drinking just water and those types of things that I've taken on for me, it makes sense to just keep going with it. Right. Mm-hmm. So why would I give why would I revert back to an old way of doing things? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So the answer to that question, if you can break it, it, it legitimately, it, it's up to you. There's, <laughs> it's up to you. And, and to consider yeah. Consider yeah. why, uh, why? Yeah, yeah. Ex- examine your own intention and motivation. Okay. On, on on that note, though, there's another part of that. When does Lent end? Then when do you break the fast? Mm-hmm. Because that the part of that argument comes around whether you can have Sundays off or where you can't. Because one of the other flip sides of that argument is no, you don't take any Sunday off because uh, 40 days brings you to the beginning of Holy Week, which is Passion Sunday. Uh, um, holy. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, sorry. I've never heard that. Yeah, that was well, that because that's Holy you, Thursday. No, no, but it brings you to the beginning of Holy Week because you're six or seven days until Good Friday, and you know what I mean. Like if you take six Sundays out of Lent. Oh, and that brings you to 40 days. So you could start. A good so here's here's the answer. When does Lent end? Yeah. Well, yeah. Lent, I'm gonna, there's a two-parter. Yes. Yep. So I don't Good. want people to run off and start feasting <laughs> on chocolate after my first part. Okay. But the first, the, the official end of Lent is at the uh, beginning of the celebration of Mass of Holy Thursday. The Mass of the Lord's Supper ends the season of Lent. However, yes, let's feast two, on th- Holy Thursday. <laughs> the f- your fast, your Lenten fast, should remain until you celebrate the Mass of Easter, because the whole point of Lent is we're journeying towards Easter. Remember, we're celebrating the resurrection with new life. We're rising with Jesus to hopefully a new holiness in us, a new uh, a new way of living. Right. Yeah. So it's not pig out on Holy Thursday. We're beginning the Easter Tritum, which is one celebration. It starts holy. It starts holy Thursday. It starts. You notice that holy Thursday. There's no end to mass. Yeah. And then Good Friday is the only day of the entire year where mass is not celebrated. There's, there's a Good Friday service that doesn't begin. Yeah, it doesn't begin. And doesn't there's no end. songs and doesn't end. Yeah, no songs. And then at the Easter vigil, there's no beginning. But then there's. But the then end. there's the great mm-hmm. end because so, we've celebrated the. So it would be wrong to fast in. Or sorry, it would be wrong <laughs> to just go back on your during that time. I mean, it's the. I mean, Good Friday is a day of fasting. Yeah, of course. And at nightfall. Yeah. When we celebrate that Mass of the Lord's Supper. Yeah. Like now we're moving right into Good Friday and all these things. So, and, and I always say uh, celebrate the Mass of Easter, whether that's the Easter vigil. If you're at the Easter vigil, yeah. go have fun Saturday night. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, depending on what time you leave the church, <laughs> uh, or if it's Easter Sunday, yeah. then have fun on Easter Sunday. Mm-hmm. But uh, Lent is Lent is over. But the Easter Triduum, which is the highest celebration of the church's year, 
starts right there at the Lord's Supper. Okay, so would that kind of be like breaking your fast? Uh, in the olden days, I'm going to bring up, yeah. where you used to fast all morning until you received the Eucharist. So 8.30 Mass was really... Well, think morning. about this, right? Okay. If it, like if Lent ends with the beginning of the Lord's Supper Mass, yeah. so you're already at Mass, Yeah. at the end of that Mass, there's no ending because now the church's entire is stripped. Exactly. Because it's now it's night. Yeah. So you're anticipating the next day, which is Good Friday. Which is fasting. The tabernacle's empty. The church is stripped. We are now in the Garden of Gethsemane with Jesus. Yeah. And overnight, we are going to work, walk with Jesus on his uh, uh, arrest, on his uh, condemnation, his passion, his death. You don't want to be picking up what you gave for Lent on that day. like it just, Or, or it. when you go home on Holy Thursday night. It just yeah. doesn't make sense. And then you celebrate the death of Jesus, and there's this emptiness. The church is empty. The bells don't ring. Um, and, and like the next day happens. Easter Vigil is such a weird morning because the, the, the tabernacle is empty. Jesus is dead. It's yeah. not really a great day. To just pick up your chocolate habit again, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, or whatever. Like, wait till you wait. Celebrate well, wait Easter. until you finish the mass, right? Yeah. Wait until yeah. sad, Saturday when you finish the mass. Okay, another quick one, only because uh, I know that's a weird question, but um, a lot of the Christian churches, Protestant churches, let's say, uh, not Catholic churches, celebrate on Good Friday. That's their big feasting day because that's the day He died for our sins. That's the day that we were saved through His death. Mm. Does that make sense? So, what? Why does the Catholic Church teach differently? To that, I mean, we do celebrate. We celebrate the resurrection, right? Um, versus we ce- celebrate, like we we almost we go through the passion in the morning, but then but then we celebrate Easter. They celebrate, which it to me in a in a way seems legit. Like you're celebrating being saved from sin, from no longer slaves to sin, that kind of thing, because he died on the cross. So they're celebrating that, like that's the feast. Uh, versus we celebrate the resurrection. What what? What would we say to that? Yeah, it's, it's tough because different Protestant denominations are kind of different degrees of separation away from the church. kind of the, the traditional yeah. church. And some some don't recognize Lent at all. Yes. Um, yeah. So some, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Presbyterians will, yeah. will, or like uh, some other, um, <laughs> um, you would say, kind of more uh, liturgical or more kind of traditionally oriented denominations will. Yeah. Um, but some some won't even have a Good Friday service. So, okay, some yeah. some will have just a, a, a brief uh, uh, Good Friday service, but again, the East, Easter is is taken as a whole. So it's yes. just like Easter is the celebration, um, and that includes you know the, the full range. But Holy Week itself is yeah. in, in a lot of denominations is isn't a thing. thing. Yeah. So you're saying that we follow because our Mass goes Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Like we really are celebrating, but we're waiting until the end of yeah. Mass to celebrate. Versus the the middle day, I think too. Also, dying to like we're called to follow in the step footsteps of Christ, and part of that is dying to self, and is specifically like following His passion on the cross is to die to self at that time, right? Mm-hmm. Is to is to learn about suffering so that we can yeah. rejoice in the resurrection. And I think it's wise too. Like there there are two different celebrations: Good Friday and Easter. Like they're two mm-hmm. different celebrations. I don't think there's anything wrong with marking the day that Jesus died mm-hmm. for us in a somber way. Yeah. Like, yes, he died for us, but he was also killed. And in the same way, I think that Catholic churches uh, display crucifixes yeah. to yeah. remind us of the death of Jesus, and Protestant churches opt to mm-hmm. put, not put have the, the corpus, cross, yeah. Not, yeah. not the body of Jesus on it. There's nothing wrong with reminding ourselves that Jesus died for us. And, and in cool. fact, it's one of the most powerful liturgies of the year mm-hmm. yeah, right, I agree. that we celebrate. Yeah. And one of one of the things that was attractive uh, about Catholicism for me was that you're, you're not only, yeah, you're, you're not doing that in an individual self-directed way. You're doing that in a structured way. You, mm-hmm. you have an entire season of preparation, but you're not doing that on your own. Yeah, everybody you're with the it. entire church yeah. journeying, you know, on, on that pilgrimage towards Calvary, but ultimately towards kind of the resurrection. So uh, again, it's uh, a lot of times in, in a Protestant drama, it'll come down to whatever the pastor, whatever emphasis that that individual pastor sure. wants to place on, on Easter or... Yeah. Whereas in the Catholic Church, we, we have the tradition, we, we have, have the actual the, ritual. We have the structure, we, we have, have the, structure. The, okay. the discipline, we have the rules. Yeah. Um, and so we are allowed to party. And like we party r- for the same reasons. Rule, but... rule in the classical sense, not yeah. just like <laughs> rules and like expectations, but actual, like an actual rule um, a fault, like rule in the sense of a ruler, yeah. um, uh, or like a rule of life that you know uh, religious will follow. That you know we have uh, expectations that are aimed at you know preparing us for again walking with Jesus through um, um, through his whole his, life, through his passion, yeah. death, and resurrection. 
Okay, so uh, just to uh, wrap up here, the, yeah. the quick little liturgical things that I think uh, just are quick uh, are, are, are good to mention. Uh, like some churches during Lent uh, don't baptize children, <laughs> and oh. there's no <laughs> there's no uh, precedent for that. It's just they, like are they big, trying? Are they trying to just wait till? Yeah, it's like Easter? oh, Lent is a somber time, so we don't baptize. Like we should be baptizing at any time. Okay, uh, that, that's all <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, also, some churches get rid of the holy water font at the at the beginning of the yeah. church and replace it with like sand or like a cactus or something yeah. like that because it's Lent. So you can prick your finger. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> Lent doesn't mean to deprive of deprive us of a reminding baptism? ourselves of our baptism. I think that was a made up thing when people were being creative in the liturgy uh, but uh, I'll balance that out with one of my favorite things during Lent and that is on the fifth Sunday of Lent you know what happens on the fifth Sunday of Lent is that yeah every holy image and and oh symbol gets covered up covered yeah every statue every statue yeah. every holy image on the fifth Sunday of Lent is it's covered covered and I love that practice because you come into the church and you're like Whoa, we're getting Something's really here. close to something, to, to the end of Lent. And there is this sort of elation at mm-hmm. Easter when all those things are come off again. I love right? the, when the lights come on with the Gloria and everything else. And yeah. The lights kind of come on and the ringing of the bells and all that stuff. It yeah. is really kind of cool. If you've never done an Easter vigil, maybe we should talk about the Easter vigil one of these times. Yeah. But um, like the, it is a really cool um, time to kind of go yeah. through. It's a longer. It's two or three hours. It's a lot of readings, a lot of psalms. Uh, but it's kind of cool to watch the journey of salvation from the Old Testament to the fulfillment yeah. at the end. Beautiful. Can, yeah. can Beautiful. I quickly yeah. just add? Yeah. Um, so that was the moment, you know, the, the lights coming on yeah. that, um, uh, that I realized that I, I was, um, uh, you know, uh, ready to make the leap of faith. Like, oh, yeah. Fully in. But I had deferred uh, being received into the church uh, by year because I was still working through some some yeah. things kind of theologically and personally, and um, I, I decided to kind of uh, put it off. Um, and it was at the Easter vigil where I was supposed to be received into the church that like that clicked. Uh, that that clicked. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Well, thanks be to God for that. Right. So, thanks for chatting for the uh, these uh, sort of uh, Lenten practices that people celebrate uh, during the season of Lent. If there's another Lenten practice that maybe you at home celebrate or want to share with us. You can drop us a line at askus at thecatholicbuzz.com uh, or right on our Facebook and Instagram pages. And here's a question for you who are listening at home that you can comment on our social media. It comes from our producer, Dave. It says, on Fridays during Lent, if you are a vegetarian, what do you fast from instead? Ooh. Yeah, so you can drop us that answer and we'll Tofu. talk about them in another episode, okay? So continue having a blessed season of Lent for Josh Sullivan and Matt Van Milligan. My name is Father Daniele. We'll see you next time on The Catholic Buzz. <laughs>